shout out to my boys, Andrew Neewee, Brad Owen, and Jamin Burton for being nominated for Best Poker Vlogger this year. And apparently, this screwball peanut butter whiskey is all the rave. So cheers to you guys. I guess Jamin and I are gonna have to drink it all by ourselves since Brad and Andrew won't be here, but I feel confident in our skills. Cheers, guys. Last time on The Drawing Dead, we decided not to sleep, but rather lose some money in a quick Ameristar session before hopping on a plane to Vegas, checked into the Vidara, walked to the Bellagio to win back the money we lost in a little bit more before heading to the Vidara again to catch the shortest of naps, change clothes, scoop up rain delay, and head over to the Poker Go Studios for the GPI Awards. The day is barely half over and I'm already beyond tired, but hey, I kind of look good. Why'd you bring us here? Johnny Chan walk in and you know the whole place stops Johnny Chan walks in everybody puts an eye on him welcome to the second annual global poker awards live from the beautiful poker go studios here at Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas the energy in this room is amazing as industry heavyweights have gathered to celebrate the best that poker has to offer our next award is for vlogger of the year presented to the vlogger who not only releases quality, well-produced content, but has an innate ability to connect with their audience. And the nominees are. Vlogger. Jamin Burton. Andrew Mimi. Daniel Negrani. Brad Owen. And the winner is Andrew Nimi. Hello. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this award. Media content video. And the winner is Joey Ingram. He's a god! I mean, come on, guys. Is the guy not a god or what, right? You turn, on, you turn it on, right? You see a guy having a look down at his fucking crotch area every single hand, every time he's in a big spot, every time he's in a big moment, right? It's one of the weirdest things you've ever seen in your entire life. And you say, I mean, is the guy a god or is he the best player in the world or what's happening here, right? What's going on? You watch a bunch of streams, right? Every single time, he's cranking his fucking neck. I mean, right? When you see things like that, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to are you going to stream for 30 days straight? Probably not. I, I shouldn't have done that in retrospect. Kind of lost my mind a little bit. But never let them see you down your journey only just begun. I believe in happiness. Happen if you practice it. Activate your inner bliss and destiny will manifest. I believe in truth. So keep it G with what you say. If I believe in you, then what you promise to believe in me. So I came. I showed up. I got all suited up. Even met this guy. Well, you know what we are? We're this year's winners. We're both big fucking losers this year. That's what we are. <laughs> That's what we are. Ryan DePaulo, ladies and gentlemen. We got him next year, man. 
Next year. Next year it'll be our year. Next year we're, we're just hitting our stride. Slam dunk next year. Fucking Mimi. <laughs> Can't even be here. It's too good to be here. We're here, dressed up, looking great. We got you, Mimi. Next year. Good job, buddy. No, I don't. What's up? It's your girl Q from the P's and Q's Poker Vlog, and I am here with the Suave and Devil now. None other than Jamin Burton, who was nominated this year for Best Poker Vlogger. Now, this year, the great Andrew Nimi won Best Poker Vlogger again. He's won every year. That's what he does. Nimi just wins and wins and wins. Oh, just for the record, I voted for Nimi. <laughs> just for the record. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my god, of course. I'll say it here. First on the P's and Q's vlog. Outside of Poker Go Studios with uh, P's and Q's. P's and Q's. Your boy didn't win, but that's okay because I was nominated. And you're and a nom Your money, you know what else? You're a big winner tonight. I want to leave. You're a big winner. I'm going to ask you a simple question. I want you to listen to me. Who's the big winner here tonight at the casino? Huh? And I am a winner. I'm a winner in life. You're a winner in life. Right. Bro. So, Seriously. Nimi won again, back to back to back, because that's what he does. The kid is a monster. Yeah. I wish I could tell you what I was going to do for the rest of the night, but I don't um, quite know. I need to head back to the hotel. I need to drop some things off. Maybe getting into a cash game somewhere with the rain delay. We might bump into uh, this one again. Stay tuned. I'll let you guys know as soon as I know. You know how I do it. It's late. It's real late. The next stop is the Shamsa Crystals, an extraordinary shopping and dining experience. You can also access Aria Resort and Casino from this stop. It's late. It's about 2 in the morning. I haven't played a hand of poker since before the awards. And after the awards, me and P's and Q's, Joey Ingram, and a myriad of other people went out and had some drinks. The tram is now approaching the shops at Crystals with access to Aria Resort and Casino. Please hold on to a handrail. So at 2 in the morning, where in the hell am I going? Welcome to the shops at Crystals with access to Aria Resort and Casino. Please stand clear of the doors. To be honest with you, I'm not quite Next sure. Stop is Bellagio with access to Vidara Hotel and Spa. To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure. We're gonna head to Bellagio. We're gonna try to catch up with rain delay. Hell, we might head to Planet Hollywood. It's late, but it's uh, not that late. At this point, I'm really tired. Not to the walking zombie stage yet because being in Vegas will kind of pump up your adrenaline a little bit, but that pump is being heavily offset by the lack of sleep over the last two days. That being said, and knowing my A game is basically out of reach, I still decided to jump into a 2-5 game at the Bellagio because why not? We're shorthanded here and an early position player opens it up to $15 and I call from middle position with unsuited connectors. Not good. The button calls and so does the big blind. We four see a flop of 3-4-7 rainbow which as far as flops go isn't the worst for an early position raiser. However, it is semi-coordinated, and c-betting into three people can be dangerous, but he does. He makes it 25 to go. Here's where I make mistake number two. Mistake number one was getting involved in this hand in the first place. Mistake number two is me calling here with two people behind me. Yes, there are a handful of good turn cards that I could bet if checked to, but that only really becomes profitable if the players behind me fold, and on a flop like this, it's very likely that they could have smashed it. Luckily, they didn't come along, and we go heads up to the turn five of clubs that puts two clubs on the board, and he fires again. $50 this time. His range now becomes more heavily weighted towards real hands as opposed to just having two random overcards, and even though that turn should be better for me, I decided to cut my losses and just let this one go. And 
this hand, there's a $10 straddle on, meaning that when it folds around to me in the big blind, the chances that my ace high is the best hand are really high. So I decide to raise. No need to go crazy here. I make it $30. The action is now on the straddle, and he doesn't take too long with it before he calls. Plans change dramatically after seeing the monotone 8, 9, 10 board. I check, and the straddler slides $35 into the middle. This one, not too hard of a fold. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was real bound, all the odds were against me. So I picked up the page, and now I'm in the rage, give me some space. I'm a movement, and I ain't losing, gonna go, 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 like a bird. There's really not a lot going on at this table. It's playing pretty tight, so me and the guy to my left have been straddling under the gun in an attempt to get the action going. I'm under the gun this hand, and I have the $10 straddle on. Action folds to the button, he calls, the small blind calls, the big blind calls, and I look down at ace-10 offsuit. I didn't decide to straddle in order to check an ace and play flop bingo, so a raise is in order. I make it $50. As far as my image goes, I'd been raising and re-raising a lot, so to be honest, I probably could have and should have made it a bit more. What happens next is that both the button and the small blind decide that their hand is now worth $50 and call. The big blind, he lets his hand go. Three of us see a flop of 667 rainbow. The small blind checks, and now I'm kind of in a weird spot. And by weird spot, I mean I was kind of lost, honestly. This is where the lack of sleep started catching up to me. You know that fog your brain goes into sometimes when you get into a really big hand? I was experiencing that just over this flop. I couldn't put any logic together for betting or for checking. My brain just sort of stopped working. After tanking for 10 seconds or so, I check, and the button checks behind. The turn 10 of club falls, and the small blind checks again. With that 10, I now have two pair in what should most likely be the best hand, assuming I didn't have the best hand before. Sure, there are straights possible, but I would expect a large percentage of those draws to be bet off on the flop with the pot so bloated pre-flop. Random sixes are possible, but I can't live my life afraid of limp called six X's. I did pick up on the fact that the button likes to bet to him when it's checked to him twice, as he probably should. So I check it to him and he bets $80, which gets the small blind to fold almost immediately. I didn't take too long with it before I called, and we head to the river. River pretty much locks up this hand for me, it's the ace of diamonds. But sticking to my plan of letting the button fire at it, I check again. He thinks about it for a bit, and decides to bet $220 and I snap call. He shows 10-8 offsuit for a worse 10, and I take this one down. Yeah, I rose up from the dead Your words inside my head All the 
So I swung by Bellagio to say hi to Rain Delay. Jumped in a 2-5 session while I was there. Played for an hour, realized the game was garbage, and took off. In Bellagio 2-5 5 for 500. Out for 798. It's even later now. I'm still a little bit tired. But the grind doesn't stop. On to the next thing. I ain't asking for permission, no. I don't have to say I'm sorry. I ain't staying in the background, no. Cause I don't need your worry. I'm a movement and I ain't losing. Gonna go, go, go. It's probably no secret that I'm not a big fan of playing at Hollywood's poker area. It's not a room. It's just sort of a bunch of tables on the floor in between a bar, some elevators, and dancing girls. I know some of the employees and they're great, and I know the place is pretty popular. It's just personally not my thing. I can't imagine there being a louder place to play poker in the entire world than here. This place is crazy loud. So why then did I come to Planet Hollywood? I mean, it's super late, I'm extremely tired, and haven't had more than a couple hours sleep in 48 hours. Simple. One reason. To see my friend Jana. They had moved her here from Bally's to deal for the night. I came and said hi, played a few orbits, and got the hell out of there. We are, um, exhausted. 
After getting a good night's sleep Wednesday night, I played a short session at Ameristar last night, caught a flight, played a short session at Bellagio this morning, went to the uh, GPI Awards, played another session at Bellagio, walked across the street, played a really quick session at um, Planet Hollywood with some sake and some uh, tequila mixed in tonight. And now it's about five in the morning and it is, um, it's time to sleep. And it's time to sleep for a long time. So if you like the vlogs, leave me a comment. I'll probably respond. Hit the thumbs up icon and uh, subscribe. And I will catch you tomorrow. Let's just call it tomorrow evening. Cause I'm sleeping all damn day. I'm so behind on my vlogs that guess what? Next time we're still in Vegas. Today we are playing a tournament. She's actually the person that talked me into playing this dumbass tournament. So my tournament update is, I just sat down in a cash game. I think so. You think so? I, do, I, do, I do like gorilla style. Like I just, you know, like I just do it. Like yeah, get it done. Outside of Poker Go Studios, with and we're wrapping it up. We're wrapping up the GPI Poker Awards for 2019. 20. Well, for 19. the activity in 2019, the 2020 GPI. And after the awards, you know. So I stopped at Bellagio to play a session, but the table was, how do you say, garbage. But now it's later. Obviously later than it was before when I was on the tram. Where am I going now? When I should be going to bed? We are exhausted. After, a, after getting a good night's sleep Wednesday night, Played a short session at Bellagio this morning. Went through the GPI awards. Played another short session at Bellagio. And with some sake. So if you like the vlogs, you know what to do. By now, you know what to do. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And I'm tired. And it's the end of the night.